Narayan Swamiji, Namo Narayan Patil sir, Namo Narayan everyone. First of all, I'll say welcome back because we've all been meeting in the last two times with such wonderful speakers. And I'm, I welcome you all on behalf of the SSYRF family to the third edition of Satyam Yoga Conclave under the guidance of Pooja Swami, Dr. Yoga Pratapji. Uh, since last evening, we have all been soaking in during this auspicious Navratri time with enlightened souls through their insightful talks. Last evening, we had an insight about Karm Yoga by Dr. Agashe, who gave us an insight into how to do a right action and the principles behind it in our daily life. This morning, we had Dr. Nam Joshi. She gave us a peek into Jnana Yoga and spoke about how this little I that is residing inside the ego has to be conquered by the big I, which is the Atman or the self. Um, today's talk is the culmination of the three parts and this subject is close to a lot of our hearts. Um, this is the vitamin B, which, you know, all the doctors talk about the tests, which we are deficient in most of us. But that's not the vitamin B that we are going to talk about today. Today, we are going to talk about the bhakti pill. That is the vitamin pill, which is the antidote to all human suffering. And who better than an expert on the subject? And with humble gratitude, I welcome today a very renowned Hari Bhakt, Eknath Ji Maharaj Patil of the Varkari Sampradha. He is not only um, a professor of accountancy, uh, he, he, he was a professor in accountancy for 29 years, but he's a very well-known chartered accountant uh, across Navi Mumbai. So if you're just going to ask about him, everybody would know uh, him. He's very well-known for his Hari Bhakti Parayan. And um, it's really wonderful to know that Sri Eknath Ji comes from uh, a very, a uh, strong lineage. I should say he has a gene, a great gene, because his great maternal uh, grandfather was um, a saint, a sant, a uh, sant Shiro Maniji. So, um, sir, please uh, welcome on behalf of the SSYR team. Thank you so much for giving us your time. And please, the stage is all yours today. Thank you. Sorry, sir, just one, one, uh, one bit I want to say. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and maybe, um, you know, we can pose it to um, Patil, sir, for, for, you know, understanding. Patil, sir, you are muted. You'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Hello. Yes, yes. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Deho Maheshwara. Guru Sakshat Parabrahm, Tasmai Sri Guru Vednama, Jayanche Kiliya Smarana Hoi Sakal Vidyanche Adhikarana, Tichi Vandu Sri Charana Sri Guru Nchete Namaskar Uniyata. At the outset, in this Satyam Yoga Conclave, first of all, I do Pranipat, to the great yogi Satya, Swami Satyanand Saraswati, my super guru, Paramahamsa Jivan Mukta Swami, and my Sadguru, Sadguru Gopakaka. And I cannot forget because of whom I am a part of this conclave, Dr. Swami Yog Pratapji, and giving respect to our mentioning, being Vandan to all the participants, I move to my subject a very well subject and which I like very much, the Bhakti Yoga. In fact, I like the order which you are, in which you are, the, the sessions were arranged. The first was Karma Yoga. By Karma, we go to the Jnana, Jnana Yoga. And then after Jnana, the Bhakti comes, the third, third thing. So really, I thank uh, uh, Yog Pratap Ji, Swamiji, for making me part of this and giving me an opportunity to share my th thoughts with all these participants. 
So this bhakti, bhakti yoga, it is a gift of santas, saints, Maharashtrian saints or all saints. Because what happens, God is not taking a care of the ordinary jeev or ordinary person. See why, when God is coming, he is making uplifting of three things. You see, he comes paritranaya sadhuna. First thing which he is doing, paritranaya sadhuna. Vinashaya dushkutram. And dharma saustapanaraya sambhavami yugayati. So three, three works, three jobs, or three, three things he is doing, the God, when he takes incarnation. So what are those? He is paritranaya sadhuna. So if you are, you, you want to be uplifted, you have to become a sadhu. If you are a sadhu, then God will help you. <laughs> or, vinasha is a dushkrita. So you have to become a, a durjan. So if you are a durjan, then you are the, the, like Kaunas ya Shushupal. Unka udhar kiya, Bhagavan ne. So if you are durjan, then the Bhagavan will uplift you. And the third thing for which the incarnation of God is there, that is, Dharma saustapana to establish the dharma, the principles of dharma, for that God is coming. So for these three things, God is coming. What about the ordinary person? Who will do uplifting of these ordinary persons? The uh, ordinary jeev or ordinary atma or ordinary persons who are living in family or in prapancha, and they are facing so many difficulties and problems in their prapancha, who will help them? Who will bring them up? So all saints, they sit together and they thought of all the siddhantas of all this jnana yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, all these siddhantas, they were studied by them and they practically experienced those siddhantas. It is said, the santa ekanti vaisale, sarva siddhanta shodhile, jnana drishti avalokile, sarakadile shoduni teya harijana. All saints, they sit together, they have examined all the siddhantas of so all this uh, uh, yoga marga, karma marga, and seva bhakti marga, and they have taken experience of it, and they have come, come to the conclusion that what the uplifting of ordinary person will do, that is the harisanam, and that is bhakti. That is bhakti yoga. Actually, bhakti yoga, it is combination of two words, bhakti and yoga. Bhakti is nothing but the service given to the God. Whatever service we are giving, as Swamiji said, by head, by heart and hand. What service we are giving to the God, it is called bhakti. So service means the bhakti and yoga, what is the yoga? Yoga as uh, the other two speakers mentioned, Agashya sir mentioned it, that one is yoga. Yoga is a combination of two things. What are those two things? These two things are jiva and shiva, combination of jiva and shiva, that is a yoga. So, this combination of Jiva and Shiva we have to do with the help of Bhakti, that is Seva. So this Bhakti, how to do this Bhakti? This, they are, first of all, I'll explain what is the, the principles of this Bhakti. What are the Lakshana? This Lakshana, three Lakshanas of Bhaktis are there. What type of Bhakti should be and which type of Bhakti God likes? So there are three principles. Those must be there in the bhakti. The first is, it must be nishkam bhakti. Nishkam bhakti means, after mean that bhakti, bhakti yoga, there should not be any expectation. We should not do with something written. We should not expect something written. Jaisa bola na, phalak, phala sakti. See, phalak, you have to forget about the phalak sakti. You have to forget about the fruit of the bhakti. So that is nishkam bhakti. Means, it is only for the God's sake. It is nothing for me. Selfness is not there. Selfishness is not there in that bhakti. That is nishkam bhakti. When you do self with self, then it is for you, not is for God. So, and when there is self is not there, you when you are doing selflessly, it becomes a service to the God. Because they, they, nothing you are, you are not gaining anything out of that. You are not benefiting out of that. So what you are doing, that is for others. And when you are doing for others, it becomes a seva. And that seva is, other seva is nothing but a seva of the God, service of the God. So that is in Marathi, it is said, Jana seva is Ishwar seva. So whenever you are serving others, that is a seva to the God or service to the God. 
So Nishkam Bhakti, the first principle of the Bhakti should be Nishkam. Nishkam means no expectation out of that. It is only for the sake of God. And I like, I love the God. I have Shraddha in God. Therefore, I am doing this Seva for the God, for the sake of God only. That is Nishkam Bhakti. The other, the other principle of Bhakti is it has to be Nirantar. Nirantar means there should not be gap. See, what we are doing, we are worshipping God in morning for one hour, half hour, and that whole day we are forgetting. It's not a bhakti. Bhakti means satatam kirtayantoma yatantashad. Satatam kirtayanta kirta says satatam kirtayanta means 24 hours, hour atri. See, Saint Teknath is nicely explained, given an extra definition of bhakti. He says, how arneshi tuji katha. Bhakti the three things are means whatever you listen, it must be of God. Whatever you utter or whatever you talk, it must be regarding God. Or whatever you meditation you are doing, that is of God. Means 24 hours you have to be busy, these three things. Whatever you are doing, what karma you are, action you are doing, it must be for God. And that is for Ahar Nishi, Nirantar. So when you are doing it Nirantar, then it likes, it, it is like by the God. So if you are doing with Sakam Bhakti, means with the Kamana and expectation, and if you are doing for a little bit, the few time, yeah, small time, then it's not for God, it is for your sake. And say, Say uh, fifth uh, Jagat Guru is this Kripaliji Maharaj. He says that it is nothing but it is a drama we are making in front of God. Unless your mind is involved in that, if your mind is involved in that bhakti, if mind is attached with the God, then it becomes a real bhakti and that attachment has to be continuous, dirantar. There should not be any distance, antar. Now, where there is no antar, it is called nirantar. So the bhakti has to be nirantar, constant 24 hours. You have to be in connection with the God. Then it is called nirantar bhakti. And the third thing is it has to be ananya bhakti. The third lakshan or third principle of the bhakti is it has to be ananya. What is ananya? Ananya, it is defined by Narad Muni, Saint Narada. He says, anya ashreva nam tyaga saha ananya ha. Ananyaha means, Anyashreya Taga means you have to become Nisanga. Nisanga means no contact with any other thing in the world. Except God, there is no, there, no contact with any other thing that is Nisanga or Ananya. So, Nisa, Ananya Bhakti has to be there. Ananya means what? You see, very, very good uh, Ovi is there from Dhaneshwari. He says, yeah, J. Veru Suryana Vijay. Je velu surya na dije, te velu ki ratra manije. Tai se majiya bhakti vena je kije te papno hai. See, very, very meaningful way we, of uh, Ganeshwar Maharajji. He says, whenever sun is not there, when sun is not shining, that time we are calling it is a night. Like that, when you are not attached to the God, when your mind is away from the God, it's a pap, it's a sin, nothing okay. else. So you are doing sin, nothing else. Why it is called as a path? Suppose if you are not attached to the God, but you are doing some sattvic thing, good thing. So if you are doing good thing, sattvic thing, then what you will earn? You will get a punya. Punya sanchai will be there. But that punya sanchai, that is also dangerous. It, it also dangerous. Why it is dangerous? Because to uh, the whatever sanchai punya is there, so if that punya sanchai is big or more punya is there, then you will take birth in the uh, heaven. You will take birth in the heaven. You will all these uh, facilities of heaven. So bhogas of your heaven. So I swarga me jayenge or swarga ka bhog lenge. Swarga ke sab aishwarya jo hai, wo aapko milega. So this punya is also dangerous because because of punya you have to take birth and taking birth it is nothing but the painless. But you are coming in the, this samsar or coming in this world to, it is nothing but, you see, Tukaram Mara saying is there, uh, uh, 
जन्म दुखासी कारण जन्म घयावा जन्मा चे ही मूल पाहिले शोधून ही दुखासी कारण जन्म घयावा मीन्स वेन यू आर टेकिंग बर्थ इट इज ओनली फॉर फेसिंग द डिफिकल्टीज अँड सॉरो इट इज नथिंग हेल्स so in sansar in prapanch in world there is no other thing because this world is made of karma as they have said like this why this world is come into existence this is because nothing every soul it is or every jeev it is because of karma he has to he is taking birth and because of karma he has to take birth and taking birth is nothing but the sorrow it is facing the sorrow and difficulties and uh, many things which are not giving <coughs> satisfaction to us so only satisfaction is you when you get attached to the god, uh, god when you get attached to the anusandhan which is called in marathi anusandhan when you remain in anusandhan with the god then you you are uh, satisfied in, in fact samadhan the world say chitti aso dev samadhan sad tukaram says ठेवले अनंत तैसे चिरावे चित्ते असुदे व्हाट इज दिस समाधान समाधान इज नॉट सटिस्फैक्शन और मटेरियल सटिस्फैक्शन समाधान इज व्हेन युअर माइंड इज सेम माइंड इज इन कांटेक्ट विद द गॉड व्हेन इट इज स्टेबल विद द गॉड देन इट इज कॉल्ड समाधान समचित्त व्हिच इज कॉल्ड समचित्त समचित्त मींस चित्त मींस योर माइंड इफ व्हेन इट इज स्टेबल इट इज स्टेबल विद इन कनेक्शन विद द गॉड देन इट इज कॉल्ड समाधान that is the meaning of samadhan we say samadhan means i get luxury i got all means uh, pancha pakwanas and then i uh, when i get it i get satisfied that is not a satisfaction what satisfaction is expected by the santukaram that is different that is samachitta still love stability of your chitta that, that is what you have to earn by bhakti so these are the three principles that is the bhakti should be nishka and bhakti should be nirantar and it has to be ananya when it contains with this three principles then it takes you to the god when you go to the god or closer to the god otherwise what bhakti we are doing that is all drama so whatever we are because you see kabir ji very good saying of kabir ji is there what meditation we are doing mala japte hai na to he says माला तो करमे फिरे माला तो करमे फिरे जिव्या फिरे मुखमाय मान तो दाही दिश फिरे यह को सुमरन नहीं मतलब माला जप रहे हैं जिव्या फुरे में जय जीव से टंग से वी आर अटरिंग द मंत्र बट मान माइंड इज डिफरेंट मींस मूविंग टू ऑल टेन डिरेक्शन ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड सो व्हाट इज द यूज ऑफ दैट भक्ति इट इज नॉट भक्ति सो when you are uttering or we are doing the mantra jap you must be concentrating your how to do what is that process our swami ji has very well mentioned and he has explained when you say vithal how to do the vithal what is the, how to utter the vithal when you utter the vithal these three alphabet the first alphabet v when you are uttering so you should be v visarale jagat what your mind status should be we visarle jagat sab man when we use of we you have to forget all about the world that is we visarle jagat sab and when you say tha so tha means tha tharale swarup whatever meditation whatever deity you are meditating or whatever your the god to whom you are worshiping the image of that god must be clear in front of your eyes so that is tha tharale swarup whatever swarup but the image of that god it must be clear in front of your mind and when you utter the word la vithal v th la and the third alphabet when you utter the la la ya jale chitta ta th tharale v visarale jagat sab th tharale swarup la la ya jale chitta ta vithal arth anup very well it is said la la ya chitta means you have to concentrate on that roop on that image of the god and you have to be in contact with the god in fact you have to become a god yourself when you are meditating when your meditation is like that when your mantra jap is like that any then it is just to the god otherwise it's all is a drama na to kya naam japta vaikari chitta tave vishayavari when vaikari four languages means four four tongues we are bhagwan has given so god god has given four tongues vaikari madhyama paschanti and para so we are talking in uh, by 
So, Mahavata Vaikari means the making noise. Now I'm talking in Vaikari. So, Mahavata Vaikari Chitta Dave Vishyavari. So, it runs as your mind is not concentrated, it is not on God. So, all these three principles are there when that, then that Bhakti is uh, taking you closer to the God. Then, how to do it? It is done in three time, three three ways. So there are three ways of doing bhakti. One is we are doing by ukti. Ukti, then, sorry, kruti, vokti, and then vritti. These three ways of doing this bhakti. We are doing, as Swamiji said, by hands, heart, and head. So same thing here. See, it is done by kruti. Kruti means we are by hands and by body, we are worshipping the God. That is Kruti. By, we are doing Bhakti by Kruti. And Ukti means we are attaining or Japi making mantra jab. That is Ukti. So by making mantra jab, Nama jab, we are doing Bhakti. That is second way. And third way is Vritti. Vritti is, uh, vritti is in mind. So your mind should be Ananya. Third thing which I told, Ananya Bhakti means who has to be Ananda with God? Who has to become Ananda with God? The mind has to become Ananya. As I, as I mentioned the quotation of Dhaneshwari Ovi, the Majiya Bhakti Vinaje Kije Te Papanoe. Matlab, when God is not in your mind, the thing, a thought of God, or if, when you are not attached to the God, linked with the God, then whatever, if your mind is going away from the God, then it goes in the prapancha, it goes in the sausa, it, it goes in the material world. And when you think of a material world, it, is, it becomes a karma. It becomes a karma. And it, when it becomes a karma, you have to take birth to face that karma. To or bhogne ke liye, karma ka bhog lene ke liye, you have to take the birth in this material world. So therefore, Tukaramji said, the birth lena, that is nothing but to face the sorrow. <laughs> so, Ye jo hai, ananya bhakti jai, attachment of the mind to the God. That is, uh, so three ways of doing the bhakti is kruti, ukti, and vritti. Vritti of the mind. The vritti is required to be stable. You have to steer the vritti on God. Stable, make it stable or attached to the God constantly, nirantar, your manorutti it is to be attached to the God Constantly means uh, nirantar, second thing. So nirantar, it, is, it has to be attached to the... So then then it, it becomes a real bhakti. So these are the three ways. And there are nine times of bhakti is told in the Shastra. Namavida, which is called as Namiva bhakti. That is Savanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Padya Pujanam, Archanam, Mandanam. Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedyam. These are the nine types of bhaktis. So in Kali Yuga, the first three are effective. See, for Dhyan Dharana, in Kali Yuga, every Yuga, there is a importance of some action of bhakti or some type of bhakti. Krute tu dhayato vishnu. Krute Yuga me Dhyan Dharana ko mahatwa tha. Tretayam hanyad, hajjat, ijjate matam. Matlab, Kreta Yuga mein Yadnaya ko importance tha. By doing Yadnaya, we are reaching to the God. Or we are able to do the second group of a God. And Kreta Yuga, Kreta Yam, Tava Paricharya Ram. Paricharya means Puja Archa karke, Bhagavan ke paas aur Bhagavan ko paas sakte the. But Aho Ratre na kya, Krute to Dhaya to Vishnu, because we chanting the name or doing the meditation by this way, we can reach to the God in Kali Yuga. The importance given to the Namasvaran and the Dhyandhara. So the this is important, uh, important in the Kali Yuga. So therefore, the first three bhaktis, first three types of bhaktis, those are important in the Kali Yuga. What are those? The Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. These are these three things are involved in your Dhyandhara. So Shravanam means whatever 
mantra you are mantra jap you are doing whatever mantra you are uttering chanting so it has to be listened by you when you listen then your attention goes to that mantra or the meaning of the mantra you start to understand the meaning of the mantra when see every mantra starts with uh, om soham om soham means om is ekaksharam brahma gita says om iti ekaksharam brahma so om is the brahma natikya a roop of brahm so when you say om say om soham soham means saha aham so whatever is the image or roop of the god that is you nothing is om soham so you have to listen that mantra when you chant you have to shavanam so you have to listen that mantra when you are chanting the mantra when you listen your attention is directed toward and your mind is not going out of that it is not jo vichalit nahi hota hai jo mind hai jo vichalit nahi hota because if you listen the meaning which you listen the word which you are chanting the mantra which you are chanting so shravanam kirtanam is chanting the name or naam of the god chanting the naam namasmaran and vishnu smaranam means you have to do the dhyan rupa cha dhyan so when you are attention is focused on the image of the god that is that that is vishnu smaranam so these three things when come together then it is becomes a real bhakti then it will become the real bhakti i will divert little bit this bhakti is important more than whatever yoga and other other things there is one famous example i will give you which is uh, of kabir ji and uh, gorakshanath ji these are the famous the famous devotees of the god once at uh, once time they met together this uh, kabir ji kabir ji had listened about the gorakshana many things about the gorakshana and gorakshana had listened many things about the kabir ji and these two two personalities they come together they met together in kashi and they were standing on the bank of the sarovara lake so they introduced each other at kabir ji and they, both of them said uh, yeah yeah i heard about you others say he yeah, i also heard about you so what about your yoga kabir ji say uh, uh, kabir ji say what about your yoga and gorakshana what about your bhakti so gorakshana she says bhakti is better than yoga <laughs> he says no 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 bhakti, bhakti sorry kabir ji says bhakti is better than and gorakshana ji no yoga is better than bhakti then your gorakshana ji say let us test let us test it so what to do so gorakshana ji says i will hide myself in this uh, uh, water of this lake you have to find it out find out me me your test is i will hide myself in this water of the lake and you have to search me you have to find out me kabir ji says okay go ahead then uh, gorakshana ji himself i uh, went in the water and he hided himself in the water then kabir ji went and he searched everywhere and ultimately he found out he had become a fish in the water uh, gorakshana ji he has taken the form of fish and he was uh, swimming in uh, like a fish like other fish so he thought like other fish he will see me and he will not recognize me but kabir ji was a divine power divine soul so you could make out where is the, the which fish is or which form of the fish is a gorakshana immediately after certain efforts he could make out then the term of gorakshana ji come then he agreed yes you recognize me so now your turn is there so kabir ji he went in the water and he got headed he make a uh, change him and he mix with the water then gorakshana stan came he started searching he did efforts and efforts but he could not search him ultimately he surrendered and said kabir ji now i am withdrawing myself i am not able to search you come out and tell me what you have, what form you have taken in the water and why could i not uh, i could not search you i found out you so then kabir ji said as you had become a fish in the water i had become water <laughs> form of water in the water <laughs> so i had become a water itself 
so therefore he could not found out then did he said you see bhakti is better or more important than yoga one more very uh, very good muscle uh, example of ganeshwar maharaj and namdev maharaj is there so when they had gone gone, gone for pilgrimage you know that ganeshwar maharaj had gone to the panduranga vitthala and he requested him i want to take namdev ji uh, namdev maharaj with me for going for pilgrim pilgrimage or tirtha yatra then ultimately he refused no i cannot detach with my vitthala uh, my prem i cannot detach from the vitthala namdev ji said but because of adnya of vitthala bhagwan ka adnya hai karke namdev ji supported or agreed to went along with him and they went for the pilgrim and while doing pilgrim tirtha yatra karte karte they went to the rajasthan where the water is not available and went and they were finding thirsty they they were searching water here and there and very much thirsty then while searching they found what well a well of water but they went there and they first the see in the deep in the well there was the water but where you know, it was very deep it was very difficult to find out so how to take that water water is there but it's not ever we are not able to find it out so ganeshwar maharaj is a yogi and chamaudi it is called he is a best yogi so what he did he transform him in a small anu he became anu anu renu re tokada tuka akasha yoda so he became a small thing and he went down he drank the water and he came up he said my yoga help me and by because of help of yoga i could drink but i cannot i cannot the, your uh, uh, jad sharir ya heavy body i cannot take down and i cannot make it to drink so damdev maharaj he felt that is he felt little bit in mind and he said what is the use of my bhakti if i am not able to and he sat down put the asan and he started chanting vitala 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 and with that bhakti what happens the miracle happens the water of that well it comes up up to the yeah uh, uh, borders of the well and he could drink the water by hands so that is the strength of the bhakti and here see bhakti it is he drank the water but it's not only for him after that the well was full of water and all the people they took benefit of that water they were choosing that water they were, they became happy so what santas are doing they are coming for in the in form of god they are coming in this world in the form of god to uplift the ordinary people the kya je ka ranjale ganjale tasi mane jo apule tochi sadhu olkhava those who are worried those who are facing difficulties the saints are coming in this world in the form of god to uplift these jeeva uplift these uh, bhutas bhut matras so for doing betterment of them the saints are coming in this world so that is the bhakti that is the power of bhakti without bhakti no yo, no other mark will go you see before that this karma mark or yoga mark and bhakti mark it was called as a mark but after that it is transformed in the karma yog jnana yog and bhakti yog it is attached with the yog when karma is attached with the yog it becomes a bhakti and it takes you to the god when jnana is attached with the bhakti jnana yog yog means combination of jiva and shiva when that is bhakti so when jnana is attached with the bhakti then it attached with the yog then it takes you to the uh, god otherwise it is difficult so without bhakti nothing is possible bhakti it is important and only the chanting of our meditation it it will take in kali yuga it will take you to the god it will realize make you to realize the god the image of the god so that is what bhakti is doing what is the um, miracle is done by the bhakti the i will give one example and i will conclude my talk because the time is going up instead of 30 i have taken 40 more than 40 it will go above 40 now so we, we are very happy to allow bhakti. you to continue patil sir okay sir okay thank you thank you sir ji see what bhakti is doing in our life it's a very good and uh, important example i will give you see one there was a exhibition of all artists artists who who are making uh, idols of stone idols of stone means murtikar or is we call it sculptor so 
there was an exhibition of all these artists, those who are doing uh, idols of stone. So uh, national exhibition, big exhibition was there. So all expert artists of uh, those who are making stone uh, idols, they participated in that exhibition. Uh, uh, exhibition. So they participated, they, they uh, sent the entry and that exhibition was held. All beautiful and uh, skillful uh, uh, idols of uh, Bhagwan made by those artists, those were put in that exhibition. It was finding this, the judges were finding difficult to judge and find out who is the first and who is second, because when the exhibition is this, the competition is there, somebody will come first and somebody will stand for a second. They have to give the decision. Somebody has to be the prize, first prize has to be given. Some has to be given to for some person, some somebody. So, so judges were surprised. Now, how to make the judgment? Who will the, who will be the first? And ultimately, what is a competition? So they have to make a judgment, and ultimately they found out one idol which stood first. That artist stood first in that competition. And there is a, a practice nowadays. If you won the prize, you become a first in a national competition that all media people are surrounding you and they're asking a number of questions to you. <laughs> yeah, how, how many years you are doing this and what is your profession and how you are come to this line and I, like people are asking me, you are chartered account or how you <laughs> turn to this uh, spirituality. So similar way, there were, there were questions to that artist. So how it happened because uh, how you could do it? How many years practice you are doing? So he said, you see, very good answer given by that artist. And it is real remarkable and it is uh, remember, should be remembered everybody. He said, yeah, I have not done anything. The idol was there in that stone itself. Idol was there in the stone. By, uh, the, uh, by, of which stone I prepared the idol, that idol was in that stone itself. I have not done anything. What I have done? I have done only thing that unnecessary things in that stone are removed by me. But only thing I have done that whichever unnecessary things, unnecessary stone, unnecessary parts of the stone, those are removed from that stone. And then after removing unnecessary parts, automatically the idol which was there in the stone, it has come up. I, I have not done anything. What I have done, if I have removed the unnecessary things in that stone. So same thing we have to do with the bhakti, that bhakti is doing same thing in our life. What bhakti is doing? Bhakti is, uh, bhakti yoga is uh, removing unnecessary things which are there in our mind, which are there in the antakaran. We have to clear our mind. What, what is like by the God? The clear mind and clear heart. That is like by the God. When your mind is clear, your heart is clear, what comes and sits in your heart? And you realize the image of the God and you um, uh, get the darshan of the God. When your mind and you see, when your mirror is clear, then your image is clear in the mind. Like that, you are, where you have to see uh, God, God is to be realized by the mind. So mind is working. Your mind is important in the bhakti yoga. Only the importance is in mind. You have to do the bhakti only by mind, not by hand, not by body. So that is supporting things. This body, our hand, those are supporting. But we have to realize what? By mind only. The mind is important in bhakti yoga. So you, when your mind clears, the mind makes clears. And what to make your mind clear? What you have to do? You have to remove the unnecessary things from the mind, which is called ananya, nisanga. Nisanga means no sanga to other things in the world. That is Nisanga or nothing else in the mind except God. That is Ananya. So that bhakti is like by the God. And when you go for this Ananya bhakti, Nishkam bhakti, Nirantar bhakti, then the God is yours. And it won't take mind, won't take time to realize the God. And the bhakti is the only yoga which takes you to God. With this last example, I think I have taken 45 minutes with the limit which was given by the Swamiji. So with this few words, I'm concluding my talk and I thank again to Swamiji, Swami uh, Yoga Pratapji for giving me this opportunity and sharing my thoughts with all these participants. And, and also I thank to all the participant, participant, participants 
who have bared me for 45 minutes and whatever seva has went to god i surrender my seva to swami uh, uh, yo uh, satyanand ji swami satyanand ji my sadguru and whatever i talk that is my sadguru that is of my sadguru nothing is of mine see kaya me apa mare bola vi uttare parita vishwam bare bola vile so whatever i talk that is of him because what what your buddhi is getting that is from him see in third chapter of gita it is said indriyani parani ahu indriyabhya param mana manasa tu para buddhi e baddha e e buddhe parta tu saha so indriya indriyas are controlled by the mind mind is controlled by the buddhi and buddhi is controlled by the paramatma so whatever is talked by me or whatever shared with you by me that is of uh, it is not of me it is of my sadguru so whatever i uh, seva i have done i surrender to my sadguru and with this conclusion i stop here with my speech thank you very much sir thank you so much um, patil ji for such a wonderful talk on bhakti i think uh, it is time we all clean our mirrors and clean our minds so that bhakti can surface um i will um i will now request all the participants if you have any questions please either put them in the chat box or you can just uh, raise your hands and we can pose some questions to uh, patil sir Okay, I'll go. Uh, I I think Sangeeta Ji is here. Sangeeta Ji, please unmute yourself. Namaste, sir. Uh, Namaste. Um, sir, you were saying that we need to do the work for 24 hours and we need to be in the Lord. So, how do we do the work? We do the work of the world, we do the work of the world, we do the work of the world. How do we do the work? Sir, one more question I, can, I would like to ask now. that uh, we have the saints in maharashtra who had written the poetry the abhangs right jaise yeah. gyaneshwar yeah what i want aap thoda us pe bata sakte hain sir kuch jaisa samajh aa raha hai sagita ji your you actually went on mute can you repeat the second question again uh, my my second question was that we have the saints in maharashtra Who uh, wrote yeah. these poetry, which are called abhangs, Namdev, Gyaneshwar, yeah. and all? So, आप भक्ति इन अभंग के ऊपर आप बता सकते हैं कि ये भक्ति किस किस्म की है क्या है ये थोड़ा सा उस पेपर ज्ञान दे सकते हैं सर? Yeah, your first question is how can we do this karma? This bhakti, twenty four yes. hours bhakti. The answer is yes, that right. you see, when you drive a car, have you you know the driving? Yes, sir. yes, I can drive. Yeah, at least you have seen. when the driver is driving a car see he is doing at a time three things what he is doing he is driving car he is talking with the neighbor and same time he is ap applying brake or accelerator yes. and all all right. these things he is doing at a same time how he is doing all these three things because he has got the practice of that he need not have to mm. think on that whenever the obstacle comes when the speed breaker comes automatically his legs goes on the brake and the uh, car stops and yes. still all while doing this he is talking with the neighbor the man yes. is sitting how it is done this is it is called as pratikshipta kriya in science mm -hmm. so means you can do two three things at a time so like okay. that your organs will do the work but your mm -hmm. mind has to be attached with the god okay you surrender you keep attached to the god and let the your body do the work or karma that is okay. the answer for that that the other things abhanga you were telling before other, before we go to the abhanga patil sir if i yeah. can uh, come in uh, yeah 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 on this aspect there were two things one thing which yeah it is a part of yoga <laughs> no one thing which swami ji had spoken about he had said yeah. ki uh, jab mata ji khana paka rahi hai khana yeah. to रसोई में पका रही है शी इज कुकिंग इन द किचन लेकिन मन बच्चों का है जहां अरे इतना देर हो गया आवाज आया अरे खट हो गया क्या हो गया 
the mind is always with the child oh it's 5 o'clock still the child has not come the bus has not come the hands are doing the cooking but the heart is with the child that is the way you do all the activities but the heart is stolen by the lord that is one point and the other thing which is there in uh, the bhagavat uh, dharma bhakti of uh, the maharashtra varkari sampraday in that we have the uh, story of so many of saints that they are doing by the hands but the heart has gone with uh, vithal so much so yeah. vithal himself comes and starts doing the activities exactly while you are doing the work doing the work you get lost into it so much okay. time, that you pull god and the and god comes and he does everything that is how very effortlessly bhakti is very simple bhakti mein wo dimag lagane ki zarurat nahi hai bhakti is full of heart but refined heart not gamar refined heart so these are two points which just came to my mind so i interrupted no there are other examples also but we are short of time see nurses who are means uh, your bo- bo- baby is taking birth in the hospital so first of all we serving the that baby the nurse but when she serves the baby she serves like a mother but the bhav is she she is doing her duty she is not her mind is not involved in that boy, child so yes. like that your mind has to be withdrawn see your maid servant is coming in your house she is doing all your work those who are doing job are going out for the office all their house is 75% work of that is done by the maid servant but does she feel that this is my house all the time when she is doing work she is mind is involved in her house and in her children so mind is not in your house she is doing work of all all work of your house but her mind is in her house so like that you do the duties in your life but your mind should be with god attached detached to the world. detached 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 right right yes sir thank you thank you and the second question was about uh, some abhanga yes so all abhangas were saint saints were the what abhangas are done by the saint sir or in that abhangas nothing is there without bhakti all bhakti see take any abhanga sundarate dhan pite ubhay pite yes kara katavari theva they are the dhan of bhagwan panduranga the description yes. of murti of panduranga सुंदरते ध्यान उभे बिटेवर कैसे बिटेवर कडा है कर कटावरी ठेवया हात कटेवर रखे जी जी कमर पे रखे सो ऑल डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ गॉड दिस इज नथिंग बट द भक्ति व्हाट आई सेड मिस यू हैव टू डू ध्यान गेट लिंक विद द गॉड दैट रूप शुड बी द ध्यान इमेज शुड बी क्लियर इन योर इन फ्रंट ऑफ योर आईज एंड यू हैव टू लिसन व्हाट यू लिसन is very well uh, sentence is you are done by uh, given by one philosopher when we are alone you see when you are alone you talk to the god when you are mm-hmm. alone yes. talk with god and okay. when somebody is along with you you talk about god mm. yes beautiful yes, very nicely said sir lovely there's a question um, patil sir by thank you sir thank you samita ji uh and he asks when we don't see god actually by our eyes how do we love him correct that is called sagun and nirgun see that was the first uh, shloka in 12 at that 12 the answer is given for that says so, uh stal tat de the first shloka is there uh, i'm sorry matlab uh, there are two type of bhaktas those who are worshiping sagun bhagwan sagun god sagun means the, those who are having what sagun means so how the roop roop means image of the god where we see either we see in the frame or in idol so that is sagun roop of a, a god and nirgun means it has got no roop uh, uh, shape or no uh, गुनातीत है मतलब उसको कुछ ऐसा जान नहीं सकते उसको पहचान नहीं सकते नो रूप नो आकार सो दैट इज निर्गुण 
nirgun nirakar which is called so what saints are saying you start with sagun bhakti you start with sagun bhakti we start worshiping sagun roop sagun sakar roop of the bhagwan means what we are doing the in frame whatever roop of the bhagwan is given that we are worshiping or we are worshiping the god that is sagun bhakti so why doing sagun sagun bhakti you will transform to the nirgun automatically while doing this bhakti you will go to the nirgun nirakar bhagwan that is starting because if you don't as rightly asked if you don't know the bhagwan how can you uh, uh, meditate it uska dhyan kaise kar sakte this you have to sagun bhakti you have to start with and then you will go to the nirgun bhakti ஜிமேன் somebody was asking you are talking all these things where is uh, where is the bhakti for you so he told him to hold his hand and the whole every pulse of it was saying ram ram or whatever god it is so sure. the way he has in, uh, come, uh, kind of uh, assimilated everything in his body so the whole body was pulsating with uh, god yeah. right Yes, sir i have i have a question in those days we see uh, examples even somebody has beautiful example of janabai the example when she used to make uh, the cow dung cakes and chant the naam the cow dung started uh, resonating with her naam Mm. uh there are so many stories of them and it is uh, very inspiring to listen to that how is it possible for us in today's times to reach that because we are not at that level we cannot be like sokha meena we cannot be like ameshwar mauli i mean uh, we will crack much much before if uh, we are faced with all these things so in today's times how is it that we can practice bhakti see what i said you have to get attached to the uh, god by whatever way you are doing well there are different ways see ganeshwar mauli uh, a very good uh, quotation so gobi is there he says agami ekulani che khage maje evo ye bhatte ni marge भक्ति या विषय वैराग्य अथवा वैर मतलब जो भी मनोनी पार्था पाई प्रवेश कौंस ने क्या किया एज यू मेन्शन लास्ट टाइम इन युअर स्पीच दट कौंसा वॉट ही वॉज सींग कृष्ण एवरी वेर इन इन फूड ऑल्सो इन वॉटर ऑल्सो एवरी वेर दट इज द स्टेज यू हर टू रीच everywhere you must realize the god then you go to the nirguna this ultimately by abhyas see uh, Arjo, bhagwan has given reply to the arjuna when arjuna asked a question chanchalami mana krishna pramate apelvat dudam the question in 9th uh, chapter uh, krishna arjuna asked to the krishna then the answer given in next uh, shloka by bhagwan kya asamshay mahabahu mana dridan dridan nishar असंशय महाभाव मन दृढ़ अभ्यास वैराग्यन चुकुर्सर गिवन इज अभ्यास वैराग्यन चुकुर्ते सो यू हेव टू डू द अभ्यास एफर्ट्स ऑल द टाइम गो ऑन मेडिटेशन मेडिटिंग मेडिटिंग द स्टेज वेल कम दट यू फॉरगेट युअर बॉडी यू फॉरगेट युअर माइंड एंड यू विल ट्रांसफॉर्म ट्रांसफॉर्म इन निर्गुणा when this position comes while chanting meditation when you this you, when you reach to this position that you forget your body forget your organs forget your mind also no thought which is called nirvikalpa samadhi 
so when you go to the nirvikal pavastha then you reach to that ananya nirgun avastha and then you realize the god and that what how you will reach to that by abhyas by doing uh, efforts all this this practice practice and practice do meditation 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 not one hour see in gita bhagwan has given god has given the promise that yo yatha yo yatha mam prapadyante tan tatha bhajami aham that is a uh, promise given by the jitna mera practice nishta mera dhyan karenge utna main aapka dhyan karega out of 24 hours you are remembering me for 15 hours i will remember you for 15 hours if you are remembering me all 24 hours then i i will be there around with you all the times <coughs> there was one thing which i would like to add over here not a question <coughs> but at rikhya swami ji was speaking oh and how can i connect how can i have the darshan of the lord and in that swami ji said the first we have to do is discover our relationship with god like patil told that for kamsa the relation was that of an enemy very difficult for everybody for somebody radha it was like my partner my beloved for yashoda he was Right. and this way we have many relationships jokingly swami ji also is to say bhagwan jo nata jodna hai wo dil ka nata jodna legal nata nahi chhodna god is my father god is my mother god is my brother okay don't say god is my father in law mother in law because over there heart doesn't come law comes in and there god will move away so first thing which swami ji said was try and make your connection with the lord then later swami ji said that there are so many relationships but the simplest easiest and one which works best for us is you are my master i am your servant sir order me and i will do your bidding i don't have to think and swami ji said that he came to rikhya and he had given up everything he did not want to do anything he had come there for ekant but god had a different plan for him all that thing which came about was swami ji said that was not in the plan but it was in the plan of the divinities and it came up and swami ji said so many times when when his swami ji was doing his ashtottar shat laksha 108 lakh mantras anushthan at that time he heard the voice take care of your neighbors as i have taken care of you and swami ji said and those of you who have observe what happened in vikhya you would realize you would know that in the first years nobody was allowed there because swami was in ekant he was doing his sadhana he was just he because he said what i was required to do i have done but then god gave him that adesh and swami ji started he everything which started happening is a result of that adesh that is the most important thing you what easiest relation is that of servant now the question might come but i am not able to hear the sound of the lord you know the speaks to me but i am not able to hear my ears there are drums beating in my ear what do i do i need to do something then swami ji said he ex- spoke about this he said i have to worship the lord but how i don't know and 
in one satsang he said god showed me the way he came to me as a beggar he came to me as a child he came to me as a patient he came to me in all these forms where there is an environment and over there i came to know if i have to worship god i can worship this person and what happened at rikhya happens at rikhya is an act of worship practical worship it is not an act of charity it is puja which is taking place it is charna which is taking place when we do puja when we do archana what do we do we are in navratri all of you many, many of you would be say, uh, praying and then you say dhupam samarpayami deepam samarpayami naivedyam samarpayami akshatam samarpayami chandanam samarpayami and swami ji said school books am samarpayami school dress am samarpayami medicine am samarpayami games am samarpayami what does this mean it means instead of offering to deep naivedya which are actually just a medium to take our shraddha to the divine offer something which is practical and instead of well, you can also worship the god in the stone because everything finally is a pratyaya but why don't you worship god and he started the practice or revived the practice of kanya puja of course that's how it came about it's a different story for a different time but that became a focal point just as we invoke divinity in the kanya and offer worship to her let us make the offerings let us help people as a form of my sadhana not as something i am helping them no when i do puja i am not doing that stone a favor they are doing favor to me by receiving it in the same how we must do of course when we have to do we have to do everything in a proper external system but the bhav which has to be there is the bhav that i am offering to the lord and then the breakthrough comes in swami ji has said in his life he got the spiritual breakthrough at here when bhakti came in his life till that time he says he did not get the spiritual breakthrough and a certain number of people have experienced that when we forget ourselves and work for others there is a different energy which comes through and even in the various medical camps khel kood activities pratibha samarada activities which we are doing here as a dedication to swami ji that is the bhav that is the spirit which we do we are not doing this as a charity no at least i am doing this as my sadhana and when you do this as your sadhana you want to give the best to the lord and when you do that amazing grace amazing grace follows things which are way beyond our abilities start happening and then you see everything wherever there is a blockage suddenly some things come in something comes in something comes in but for that you need to keep this khopdi away and you you need to let the refined heart come up and work we are not such people who can close our eyes and continuously meditate on the lord no it's not possible like patil sir said we will be hypocrites if we say something like that but then in such a situation what do we do we do reaching out to others reaching out to others selflessly so that you can connect with them you are reaching out so you connect with him because vedanta says every person has the same atma we are all one but when we are all one if you get hurt do i feel the pain 
that that's only one Nyaneshwar Mahodi or Ramakrishna Paramhans who can have that experience. There's that very famous uh, episode of Nyaneshwar Mahodi when the buffalo named Nyana was whipped, the welt appeared on his back and the buffalo came here and started chanting the Vedas. How did that happen? It happens by the experience of Atma Bhav. You and I are one. That is the experience which we want to have. But we don't have it. And in one satsang, Swamiji had said, speak about the clinic, medical care. And he said, medical care clinic is one of the easiest way to have practical Vedanta, to achieve this form of bhakti. Because when you see somebody in pain, sorrow, suffering, automatically your heart goes out to help that person. And when you start worrying for the person with the same intensity as you would do for yourself, but you do it for that person in the nishkam bhav and without expecting anything in return, then the layers of ignorance start melting away. And that is one of the most powerful detergent for cleaning the slate. When the slate is clean, the light shines through. That is the path of yoga, which Swami Shivanandji also advocated. He said, Yam, Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyan, Samadhi. Beautiful. Fortunately, not possible. If we, for asan siddhi, you need to sit in the same asan for at least three hours. We are here for more than what uh, one hour, ten minutes. How many of us have been sitting in the same posture without a movement? <laughs> Any? Nobody. So if you sit for ten, you know, one hour, forget three hours. So then yoga is beyond us. There is a yoga which Swami Shivananji said. He said, serve, love, give, why? meditate, realize. And after realize, be good, do good, find, be compassionate. After you have achieved the highest, the Atma Bhav, which is the ultimate experience. After that, don't sit there gloating that I am having Atma Bhav. Otherwise, we will be like Narad. There was one time when Narad Muni, he had conquered Kamadev. He was doing his sadhana and Kamadev tried all his tricks and nothing happened. He maintained his sadhana. So he was very happy. And when he went across, he went to Shiva and uh, told Shivji, Look, this is all what I have done. She usually listened to him in a very passive face and said, you told me, it's fine. But when you go to Vishnu, by no chance to mention this, just keep it to yourself. Aradmuni thought, oh, he is jealous of me because I have done so. And so when he went to Vishnu, told, Vishnu said, oh, wonderful. Very great. You are a great soul. And uh, Arad Muni, feeling very happy, moved on saying, Sab aapki kripa hai, narayan, narayan, and went on. And as he went on, he saw a uh, township. He went into the township. He saw there was a, the, the king was ready for marriage. And so they saw Narad Muni has come. So they asked and he saw in her hand that whoever beds her will be the ruler of all the three worlds. And suddenly out of nowhere, the desire came in his heart. Oh, I would like to marry her. And he said, I can't do anything. No sadhana, nothing possible. So what do I do? Let me go and ask Vishnu. Went to Vishnu and Vishnu said, uh, Give me your form. Hari Swarupadena. Hari also means monkey. And 
Vishnu said smilingly, yes, I will do that. If you ask for it, he did it. And now he was this great Narad Muni with the face of a monkey. And he was seeing that uh, who is going to marry him. And he was having, uh, you know, he was uh, royally humiliated over there. And then he walked off very furious, angry. And then he sees Vishnu coming with the same kanya. And his anger knew no bounds. He cursed Vishnu left, right and center. Vishnu smiled and then said, which kanya, which city? And Narad Muni sees there is no kanya, there is no city. It was all maya. So it is very difficult to get rid of this. So when it is difficult to get rid of this turbulences of the mind, what do we do? Swamiji said, there is one thing we can do. The prayer of Kunti. There is a very famous prayer of Kunti. When Kunti, uh, you all of us know that during their hard times, only support was Krishna. But when the yajna was over, Krishna started leaving. And that time, Kunti prayed, Hey Prabhu, Jab mere paas kasht tha, dukh tha, dard tha, tab aap mere paas the. Aur jab sukh, sampatti, mere paas aage hai, to aap ja rahe hai. Usse achha mujhe prabhuan, wo kasht de do, jo aap mere paas rahenge. And Swamiji said, Agar aap kunti ki ye prarthana karenge, to bhagwan kya? Bhagwan ka baap daudi aega. Koi chara nahi hai unke paas me. And then he said, Aur agar aapko lagta hai ki aapke paas koi kathinai nahi hai, to saamne wale ki kathinai le lo, wo dekho garib ladka ja raha hai, uske liye mera man pighal jaye. Wo dekho, char din se bhukha hai, वो देखो कुपोषित है स्टार्ट डूइंग थिंग्स फॉर अदर्स माय माइंड इज ऑल ओवर द प्लेस डजंट मैटर स्टार्ट हेल्पिंग अदर्स इन अ निष्काम भाव एंड व्हेन यू डू दैट ऑल द थिंग्स व्हिच आर स्पोकन इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ योगा स्टार्ट हैपनिंग ऑल द ब्रेक थ्रूज स्टार्ट हैपनिंग एंड एट द एंड ऑफ इट when you have worked for that person, forgotten yourself, you will see that the energy which is there is beyond comprehension. And this is not my experience alone. This is the experience of hundreds and thousands of people who have done this. Even now, when the activities happen, people come and people say, Swamiji, kaise hota hai? You have never known how it happens. It happens, it happens, it happens, it happens, it happens. Because some point, Naham karta, Hari hi karta, Hari karta hi kevalam. That bhav comes in. When you are doing this, suddenly you are, when you have forgotten yourself and you start doing, you don't realize what so much has happened. And then when you step back, oh my God, how has that happened? And that has happened recently now. We had taken the sankalpa that as a part of Satyam Shatabdi Yoga Yag, we will do 108 activities as taught by Swamiji and make a dedication to them, to him. Do you know how many activities we have completed? Any guess? Anybody? Hundred and thirty, Swamiji. We have already completed ninety activities. We had decided we will be doing hundred and eight activities in the whole year. By March end, we have completed ninety. Now, with grace of God and grace of God, perhaps we will pray that we can make hundred and eight into two. And those of you who have been a part of SSYRF. We have just started. 
we don't have anything except for one thing grace of guru and grace of god and once you have that everything happens and i believe if we do not have the mind of a bhakta like eknath maharaj or like gyaneshwar maharaj or like janabai which are very difficult let us have this simple principle reach out to connect within and forget yourself and work for others do it once a week you will see the change in your life you don't have to come only here and do it wherever you are just do it and you will see the grace of the lord just flows just flows amazing things happen and the breakthrough in our life just comes like this we don't even have to ask for anything he just gives and gives and gives all my shortcomings i am full of shortcomings i am full of drawbacks tulsi das ji says mo sama kon kutila khala kami who in the world is there who is as cunning deceitful hypocritic as me but you of your unending compassion and grace have accepted me that happens that happens and i believe that this is the easiest this is the most powerful and this is the sure shot way to achieve the grace of god in our life but that is not sufficient even then sometimes people ask me swami ji is there some you know some quick fix some shortcut because we all live in the instant era we want instant nirvana so is there some shortcut to have the grace of god so in one medical camp i was working and then it just struck me we are singing the kirtan raghupati raghav raja ram patita pavan sita ram and then that got me thinking patita pavan the name of the lord is patita pavan and everywhere he has it is mentioned that he has a soft corner for those who are down trodden and when his work is towards us down trodden and then you start working for those down trodden people become in a down trodden people and you start working selflessly to your degree and you are working then you will see that god starts thinking about you it is not so essential that i know the address of god it is very essential that god knows my address so that he can send blessings to me and when we start working for those people then grace comes in and how does it happen suppose let me take your example patil sir with your permission you are a very uh, eminent chartered accountant and suppose you have to work with a client and there are multiple things which have to be done uh, you need to get some information you need to do some verification you need to do all the things you know better than me and why you are thinking in your mind okay i have to do all these things suppose you have an assistant or any person who starts doing all those things and sending the information to you will you remember your assistant who throws a tantrum or will you automatically remember that person who perhaps is not even your assistant but is doing all of this whom would you remember naturally the assistant who is doing huh? so let us be that assistant because when that happens god thinks are ye to mera kaam kar raha hai let me ensure ki uska koi dikkat nahi ho raha hai there is no difficulty in following be following him because he is doing my work so it is in my better interest i ensure that he is not having any problem what else do we need god is thinking for us i don't even have to think for myself he is thinking for me when not when i am thinking about myself 
then he says ah beta wo to apna janta hai he knows what to do what to when you reach out to others and worry about them in the same way as you would worry about yourself then you see the beauty coming in life somebody should i disturb yes please yes please <laughs> there is one very good sentence of one philosopher what you were telling or now you are describing or that one very 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 good sentence is there he says to feel happy to feel happy see how others are happy because of you if you want to be happy you have to make others happy if others are happy because of you automatically you are becoming happy you need not have to search for happiness yes that is what you see yes that is so true that is so true and i have experience personal experience that when you think of others when you forget because you know when uh, we used to we do even now we go beyond ourselves beyond our capacities and undertake things. and how do the things happen frankly speaking we don't so much so that we have stopped thinking how it happens we just focus on the work and things happen because the great i might have i have all the shortcomings and therefore god is not i am not qualified to receive his grace but because of this one thing that i am working for others so divine grace flows through us to somebody else and then amazing things happen we get amazing experiences is vidya majumdar here in the group she was there as avinash kulkarni vidya ji aap hain no she is not here she had... sir ji no. one thing i will add here see Uh, you have somebody said that how can we see the god we are not able to uh, by our side we are not able to see the god but god meets us we are meeting to the god so many times i'll give you the example many times we face this problem regarding which we cannot think i mean how to solve that problem we become mad but we are not finding the way out of that but it happens the miracle happens somebody comes and he helps us and we are coming out of that who is that then that Somebody person just comes. goes away that person just yeah. goes away. so who is that he is nothing but the god but we are not able to recognize it gita says avajananti maam muda manusham tanam ashita so when god is coming and meeting us we are not able to make out we are not able to see that sight is not the divinity is not with us it was given to the <laughs> sanjaya by vasa or arjuna by krishna is given krishna. to arjuna the yeah. divinity is not with us and that uh, we are not able to see it when we will get that and that we will get the divinity will get by uh, chanting the bhakti or doing the bhakti then the, it's a god's gift divya gift means ya yeah, drishti of bhagwan divya so and bhagwan dekhne ki uh, god dekhne ki drishti that is divya drishti and what is bhakti if you look at bhakti bhakti in sanskrit comes from the dhatu bhaja and there is a bhaja sevaya it is not bhaja pujayam bhaja sevayam such is form even in navadha bhakti it is mentioned pada sevanam seva pada sevanam you do seva then many things happen and that is the basis of all transformations in our life and that is the most important thing i think i see uh, uh, vidya ji i would like her to if she is able to she had an amazing experience in a medical camp i know we are running short on time we have almost uh, hit 9 o'clock but in 5 minutes i would like you to see what is the effect of seva what amazing things happen vidya ji are you uh, able to share that experience with us yes swami ji um, it is always in my mind uh, i will tell you in a very short this thing 
actually when I was in Reykjavik, I had the, don't break, I had the uh, bhagya of attending Swamiji's medical camp. I was not included in the medical camp because I was doing some other seva of editing the book. That And then I had some dream uh, or vision, I don't know, I, I cannot understand what it was, that there was a rocket and uh, the rocket came from outside the world. I was looking at it. It came down, touched the earth, and then I ran to uh, help the person out. And I thought it will be like any antarar veer with uh, dress up and all that. But no, actually he was on a wooden plank and a very uh, gouty or a very uh, desi person with ordinary dress, ordinary looks. He was lying down on the wooden plank. And I had to help him out. And I saw that he could not walk. His legs were not okay. That was my experience. Uh, that is what I saw. And uh, my dream ended there. And I thought that I don't uh, believe on dreams or anything. So I thought, if it is true, I must see it. Means uh, it cannot be the play of my mind. It's an individual that cannot be true. And I myself did not believe it because I will not believe it if anybody says to me like that, that I saw this. Because let many me, people see let me interrupt interrupt a bit and introduce her. She is a professor in physics and uh, a hardcore physics person, you know, uh, they will not accept anything beyond matter. So, I mean, a very, very scientific oriented person. She had come and she was doing her seva and then this happened to her. Go ahead. And one part for the last three days, I was feeling a little restless. I was thinking something is going to happen. And I'm not sure what will happen to me. I mean, I am not very good sadhak, nothing. And still I was restless and I was asking every medical person who had joined, that did you see a person uh, who cannot walk? And they all said, no, no, that, that is an orthopedic. And uh, there is no orthopedic section this time. Actually, I knew that. But still, I kept on asking nurses, doctors, some sadhak who were doing there. And then one day, when there was no work for me, because my computer section was closed, and the lady in charge of that, or the sannyas in charge of that, they were also in, busy in some other work. So I thought that, OK, like, let me go see the puja. So I went to the samadhi. And the samadhi doors were closed. They said, no, you cannot enter now. Then I thought that, okay, then let me go and see how the medical camp is working. And there was one girl from Bombay with me. And she said, okay, I, I also want to go, let us go. And actually, as I was entering the medical that, uh, place, I saw that white light color was showering on that place. It was like, an, I can say in physics words only, like a radiation. It's a white radiation, light radiation. And it was a Rikyapit. It was not in snow or anything like in America or Canada. And I kept on looking at it. It, it was filled with white light and particles, very fine particles. And I thought it is uh, something went with, wrong with my eyes. But no, it was continuously falling, showering down showering down on everybody. And there was a sheet of cloth as a mandapam. Through that mandapam, the white light was pouring in. It was morning, I think maybe eight or nine only, not very morning. And uh, as I entered, I saw from the other entrance, a person on the wooden plank carried by four people. And as they came to the gate, uh, they took him down and they helped him because he could not walk. And like to, uh, that was the person. Now I would like to tell the other part of the story. Yes. I was there and uh, lots of activities to be done, getting patients in, too many things to be done. And I was doing things and I see one lady walking in, like people come because uh, we have a system. Before the camp starts, we do a kirtan. And after the kirtan, we start. Now, this person walks in and I look somewhere else and I look back and that person is in tears. 
crying and crying bola kya ho gaya did somebody say anything did she hurt herself was you know bit and i went to her i asked her to sit down she would not just talk she was just crying and crying and sobbing and i did not know what happened and then she said that that person that person she could not even say anything she was just saying that person and he was this uh, cripple who had come in and because he was a cripple we did not make him wait in the queue we asked him to come and sit ahead and that person she saw. and then she said that she has seen that person so i thought maybe she has seen him while walking up she must have seen later on she showed this now you continue this background so actually and uh, that person somebody said i mean it was swami satyananda or i don't know because i have never seen him somebody said that he is coming from the eighth sixth world uh, um, from the last and that is satya uh, world so i was just thinking what is all happening and then uh, actually as soon as i saw him like a drama or like a vision that a person is coming who cannot walk and he was on the wooden plank actually somebody supported and brought him inside so my actually uh, legs gave away i thought i am going to fall down i could not stand only and i was just tears in my eyes i could not control myself i have never experienced such an experience i mean of my physical disability that i cannot walk i cannot control my tears what is happening to me i don't understand this was such a funny uncontrollable helpless situation then then shreya was telling me something that okay we will go we'll see and then she saw me crying then she said what happened i said no i have to sit down because i cannot stand then she said okay okay you go to swami you go to swami ji she pushed me towards the swami ji and then i told him that yes yes i saw him and he comes from the seventh world it was a very and i thought that he will think that i am a mad person because how can a person who had just entered and i am telling that he is from the seventh world so i was sure that nobody will understand and he, swami ji said yes such things always happen in my medical camps it's not and then i just camp. it actually, is swami ji he medical. never said it's my medical camp this is my version he said in the medical camps he so never said my my the medical. reason why i asked you to share this was that miracles do happen the moment we reach out beyond ourselves and try to help others selflessly miracles happen spontaneously we don't need we don't need to be great sadhaks we don't need to be anybody we just need to make that effort and divinity unfolds with it and i think with this how let us conclude our conclave that let us practice this form of yoga this form of yoga which encompasses every other form of yoga isme kriya yog bhi aa jata hai hatha yog bhi aa jata hai raj yog bhi aa jata hai bhakti yog to hota hi hota hai karma yog gyan yog everything melts into this pot called bhakti yog and that is the ultimate and bhakti all the things culminate in bhakti bhakti is the only yog which starts as bhakti yog continues as bhakti yog and culminates as bhakti yog that is the ultimate and it doesn't need anything there are no pre qualifications only the heart has to go out jaise jata hai jaane dijiye reach out to others and god will make a difference with this Swamiji, sorry to interrupt you. There's just one more question here. If you want to quickly uh, look at look at that, it's sure. Daniel says, if one does a lot of nam jap, will one naturally gradually develop bhakti over time simply by persistence? But I think he's also put the answer. The power of nam itself would transform and purify the intention until it becomes bhakti. Yes, nam has got great power. Even if you start doing it as being a hypocrite there was a story of a person who became uh, you know he sitting and doing his chanting because he was a criminal so he just you know to escape from police but then from there onwards there is also a movie which was there 
कोई एक मूवी था ना जी देवानंद का मूवी था आई थिंक गाइड देर वॉज अ मूवी गाइड इन विच ही वॉज अ क्रिमिनल एंड ही गोज एंड बिकम्स अ साधु एंड एक्ट लाइक अ साधु एंड ही इज डूइंग जब ध्यान एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा एंड इन द एंड इट इज शो दैट देर इज अ ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन दिस The power of name is so much that even if you start taking it as a hypocritical thing, doesn't matter. Continue. I will add, sir. Because hmm? guide, guide. Something yes. I will add. I like to add. Yes. Is, yes. Now, how is the what is the power of now? So when you uh, chat, uh, do a chatting of now. So now has got two qualities, two benefits of the now. It's mage zali mahapa pune nai garbawas. Are wa. These are the two benefits. So whatever scenes you have done, those are burned by the now, and today now is garba. So you need not to take birth. That is the two benefits of job, job, now jobs. So uh, whichever way we start uh, taking the name, oh, that is beautiful, and then everything starts happening spontaneously. So I would like to thank everybody on this occasion for. coming together especially the eminent speakers dr agashe dr namjoshi dr patel who have come and shared their expertise and have really made this occasion a very beautiful occasion so and this note with the blessings of the masters let us take a sankalpa because we are in navratri that let us pick up one thing which has you know uh, resonated in our heart and take it up and make a small change in our life not a big change a small change in our life and that small change eventually like the snowball effect only a positive aspect it will make a huge change in our life with this sankalp let us conclude close your eyes gently think over for a few moments that one thing which has appealed to you the most take that sankalp that you will try and implement that quality in your life and with this sankalp we shall chant the mantra om three times followed by shanti pa take a deep breath in oh om om असतो मद्गमय तमसो मोतिर्गम मृत्योर्मात गमय स्वस्तिर्भवतर्भवतर्ण मंगल लोका समस्ता सुखिनो सुखिभवक यजामहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वागमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता Om Shanti 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 hi hand sing pranam mudra tvameva mata cha pita tvameva tvameva bandhuscha sakha tvameva tvameva vidya dravinam tvameva tvameva sarvam mama deva deva 
होल्डिंग अ रिट्रीट वेर वी कैन एक्सपीरियंस कर्म योग something of gnana yoga and bhakti yoga so i will be working on how to organize that and i will share with you uh, how it is possible and those of you who would like any have any doubts which you would like cleared which you have not been able to do during this time because time has been a premium you can send your emails uh, to uh, the email at support at sumiran.org or uh, you can send a message to me or uh, to any one of the uh, uh, ssyrf team and then we'll get together we'll get to the teachers and we will uh, make it. the idea is to reach out and let this knowledge you know uh, reach out to as many people and benefit as many namo narayan namo narayan swami ji Namo Narayan Swami Ji. Namo Narayan Swami Ji. Thank you so much, Patil Sir. Namo Narayan Swami Ji. Namo Narayan Sir. Namo Narayan Madam. Such an insight. Namo Narayan Patil Ji. Namo Narayan. Namo Narayan Swami Ji. And I mean, I am I am really especially thankful to Patil Sir that in spite of having to go to USA, you know, when I spoke to him, he said, "But I am going to USA tomorrow," and then oh. the same breath he said, "But don't worry." i will go there and i we will get in touch and i will certainly so in spite of having so much to do he has taken time out for us very very happy and thankful very very appreciative partner thank you thank you ramesh so let's start conclude